Vincent Zelke is a climate specialist and is joining us right now live from London. Thank you for being with us, Derwood. Just tell us, uh, in your understanding, what are the main drivers of this increase in water temperatures? Well, we're putting a tremendous amount of climate pollution up into the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels and from putting methane, hydrofluorocarbons, black carbon soot, tropospheric ozone. All of these are climate pollutants that form a blanket around the Earth. It's causing it to warm day by day more and more. 90%, a little more than 90% of the heat that we are producing with this blanket goes into the oceans. When that heat goes into the oceans, it causes a whole series of impacts. It causes thermal expansion. Warm water expands. That means the sea levels start to rise. We kill the um, coral reefs. We change the ecological system, send fish and other wildlife to other parts of the world, uh, other parts of the oceans where they are not welcome. We start to melt the fringe of the ice around glaciers in the Antarctic, in uh, the Greenland ice sheet. We continue to melt the great white reflective shield of Arctic sea ice, which also adds additional warming because you lose that reflective sea ice and you replace it with dark water, which absorbs more heat. So this is an incredibly dangerous moment where we've seen the oceans warm in the last 15 years as much as they did in the 45 years before. So the warming is accelerating. This means we're getting very close to self-reinforcing feedbacks, taking over the climate system and pushing us past the series of potentially irreversible and catastrophic tipping points. OK, with that rather pessimistic analysis, Derwood, can you give us any cause for hope in saying, is the process we're on right now reversible? Well, it, it is uh, possible to slow down warming. Yes, absolutely. And you do that by continuing to decarbonize, move to clean energy. But that doesn't bend the warming curve in the near term. We've got to bend this warming curve right now. And that means cutting methane as the single most powerful climate pollutant that we can cut today. Methane comes from uh, oil, gas, and coal. Natural gas or fossil gas is primarily methane. It comes from our waste when we put food and other organic material into a landfill and cover it with dirt, take away the oxygen. It turns into methane. And our agricultural practices, from growing rice to cattle and sheep and other ruminants, that produces additional methane. So we've got to tame methane immediately. And that starts um, with what uh, President Biden has been doing in the European Union and others with the Global Methane Pledge. And now we need to turn that into a global methane treaty with mandatory measures that will say to the world, you must reduce your methane on this immediate schedule because it's the only way we know to bend the warming curve in the next 10 to 20 years. That's really the window we have to get our act together. Derwood Selke, we thank you very much for your contribution.